Each week, we provide you with an exclusive report in partnership with our friends over at Colorado Avalanche Information Center. It's time to check in with CAIC for this week's report. Okay, Mountain TV, and excited to have our weekly exclusive feature with CAIC back on deck. Winter's here. Brian, it's great to see you. Hope you had a good summer. Hope you got rested up. Uh, we got a lot of work to do over the winter. And again, it's great to see you and have you back on board here. No, it's good to be back. Yeah, thanks for uh, starting these up again and look forward to a season ahead of us. Yeah, for sure. Well, we have, you know, lots of old viewers. We have a lot of new viewers. We're going into a new fresh winter season here. Tell us what CAIC is, what CAIC does. We are a state government agency that does weather and avalanche forecasting for the state of Colorado. You can expect daily weather and avalanche forecasts from November 1st through Memorial Day for all mountainous areas of Colorado. Um, we are a government agency within the state's Department of Natural Resources. Got it. Okay, so you're part of the state government and um, kind of silly question, but is, is there avalanche danger now? I mean, it doesn't seem like we have that much snow. Um, is it, you just get ready for things or how does that shake out right now where we are in the season? Yeah, so right now there is avalanche danger, although you'll notice if you go to our homepage map, um, avalanche danger is rated low across all of the state right now, which okay. means generally safe avalanche conditions. And that's mainly due to the fact that we don't have that much snow on the ground. Uh, this right. is not, does not mean avalanches are impossible, however. And so, you know, we're warning of a few problematic slopes um, that might be fueled by this storm that rolled through on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. And so mainly we're warning people of kind of drifted, stiffer snow on north and northeast aspects, way up high in the Alpine that held snow from earlier in October. Well, exactly. And especially those higher elevations, as you pointed out, there's not a lot of snow down on the ground in some of these resort communities. But up, up high, there, there's a decent amount of snow from these past couple of storms. What do your projections look like as we kind of get into this early part of winter? Yeah, I mean, you know, how it's going to play out um, has to do with, uh, so like, you know, here's a good example of some of the avalanches on these isolated slopes that you might be able to trigger. This is our first recorded one of the season up on Independence Pass from mid-October. And what the snow that fell in um, mid, uh, the very end of the month did, and this was a snow cam from right around the Aspen ski area, which deposited two plus feet in those deeper zones. It did create a bit of a snowpack structure. And so what we've got now is that storm snow from late in October sitting on the early October snows. Now this is one of our deeper areas, but you can see we've got that storm snow sitting over the early October snowfall. And what that does is create the stronger snow, which is uh, on the top of over the weaker snow. But that only is a problem in places where the early October snow lasted and didn't melt out. So those are those very high elevations above around 11,500 feet on north facing slopes that we are warning folks about. This is what happened on Wednesday and Thursday. So we had a little storm that rolled through Wednesday and Thursday, it dropped upwards of around six inches in some areas. And so that's gonna create a little bit more of a load. Like you can see our, uh, we've got green or generally safe avalanche conditions across the state. But what we're warning about are these wind drifted slopes on these north, northeast and east at high elevations. And most of these avalanches are gonna be quite small. But when you're out in the field, um, this is what we're looking for, is this drifting snow that's loading onto those northerly aspects because that creates this stiffer snow which can crack. And here's a really good example of that type of situation up on Loveland Pass. Your main concern is that it's very thin coverage and so we've got lots of shallowly buried obstacles. Even a small fall or a ride, or if you're out hunting and tromping around in the high country, and you get uh, slipped off your feet is you're likely to get dragged through rocks, stumps, logs, things like that. So it's a really easy time of year to get injured. Well, right, exactly. And hey, the, the snow has arrived, uh, the season is here, so time to be careful. And uh, we're just, you know, so uh, glad that we're partnered up with you guys. We're going to have these weekly updates. The website is at the bottom of the screen, guys. Uh, check that out. It's constantly updated. There's maps on there, conditions on there. I encourage you to use it. And again, uh, safety first as we go into winter. Um, these things are, you know, these accidents are largely preventable, uh, we think, um, if you're educated and careful. And uh, we're going to rely on you, Brian, to help us uh, do just that. Yeah, please check out the website at colorado.gov slash avalanche. Um, go rolling into this weekend and early next week. It's a pretty dry period. Avalanche conditions are likely to remain generally safe on all but those isolated slopes. But please tune in next week. We have another storm that's hopefully rolling through next weekend. Okay, sounds good. Good to see you again. Glad to have you back on board. Happy winter. And uh, thanks so much for popping in here with us on Mountain TV.
You can always stay up to date with the latest forecast at colorado.gov slash avalanche. Enjoy the backcountry and be sure to stay safe out there.